one student asked me about the Fourier transform of a cosine and how he was questioning why we have the um, two impulses at plus and minus 10. And the reason behind the question is that if one were to use a cosine t as our original x of t, and the two impulses as our x of omega, and consider these to be a Fourier pair, then going from cosine t to cosine tan t is like trying to find x of tan t. And that is scaling. And the question is, why can't we use the scaling property? Because surely the scaling property of the Fourier transform would dictate that we had x of omega over 10. Okay, so that's what we would expect if we were to use the scaling property. Now, if I were to write that in the frequency domain for this as my x of omega, then it would look something like this. 1 over 10 times an impulse of omega over 10 minus 1 plus omega over 10 plus 1. So his question basically was, that looks nothing like that. So something must be wrong for the Fourier table, the Fourier pair table, to give us this expression here. And what I probably need to, to clarify here is that the delta Dirac function isn't an ordinary function. So this, this delta Dirac function is not ordinary. And when scaling it, there's a, a unique way in which this is scaled. So when you have a delta Dirac function, which is infinitely thin but has an area of 1, when you scale it by a factor of a, um, where a here is um, positive, but actually, it doesn't really matter if A is positive. When you scale it by a factor of A, you're, well, if A is, is, if a is greater than 1, what you're doing is you're making your um, pulse narrower. But it's already infinitely narrow, so it, it can't become narrower. So it's fairly easy to show that we actually end up with... Um, a scaling that looks like this. Let me get this out of the way. So a scaled delta Dirac function is actually a unit function, delta Dirac function, divided by A. And the reason is because the area has to remain 1. And as you make your pulse narrower or broader, you, you actually change the area. So let me put that, let me highlight that for you. That is a property of the unit impulse that we can use. And I can write the, um, so if A is 1 over 10, as it is in this question here, I could say that the a delta Dirac instead of t I'll put omega omega divided by 10 equals 10 because that's 1 over a times a delta Dirac function like that. So if you go back to the question, 
using the scaling property, we ended up with this, which is a scaled delta Dirac function. So what we should do, really, is replace this with what we found here. So if I make a little bit of space, I can now actually rewrite this by saying it's 1 over 10 times 10 times delta Dirac function of 10 times omega over 10 minus 1 plus the same again. And that will give us exactly what we found from the Fourier table pair. So actually, whether you use scaling or you use the Fourier transform pair uh, table, you'll get the same result. The difference is because of this relationship here, that the delta Dirac function, when scaled, needs its area normalized by dividing by the absolute value of the scaling constant. A. So I hope, I hope you found that helpful. So in case you were wondering whether to use the scaling property or the um, expression for the, the Fourier transform table, I hope um, you find this helpful.